So what is a model? We spoke about it earlier. It's an equation. Okay, a model is an equation. Okay, in school we talk about equations. Right, in the real world they talk about models. Okay, but a model is just an equation. You're building a model, right, that represents variables that are part of a, let's say, a problem. Okay, so the problem might be supply and demand. Okay, how do I determine price? Okay, you'd be able to create a model, demand equals supply, to find equilibrium. Okay, and that's one of the application questions that you could see in this module, is supply and demand. Okay, so what is a variable? X is a variable, Y is a variable, so what is a variable? It's a placeholder. Okay, it's a placeholder for what? For a value. Okay, because we know demand could be representing maybe customers. Okay, so how many customers buy our goods? The variable would represent the number of customers, or the variable could represent the number of products. Okay, the variable would represent something. Okay, right, so if I consider a store and they're selling products including that. Okay, you've seen that, bef that before in accounts, okay? So what will the selling price model look like? What would selling price look like? Selling price excluding that would be what? Okay, so selling price excluding that would be our X. Okay, so if I want selling price including that, that would be what? 1 comma 1 4 X. Okay, I'm adding 14% to the excluding that amount. Okay, so a variable here is what? A placeholder. It's a placeholder for something. Is that right? Okay. All right, so use your model and solve for the following, okay? I want to know what is the selling price including that? What did we say we have to do? 1 comma 1 4 X. Okay, so what is 1 comma 1 4 times 50? Fifty-seven. Yes. Okay, and what is fifty-seven? The selling price including that. Okay, notice how I'm using the equation to get the right answer. Okay, that's modeling. You're creating a model that gives you an answer based on your scenario. Okay, obviously 100, if I add that to 100, I get 114. Okay, what happens now if I've been given this and I want to get that? You'd have to divide. Okay, because remember, 1 comma 1 for x represents what? Inclusive. Okay, so to get the exclusive, what am I going to do? Divide it by 1.14. And that's going to give me what? 200. Okay. So if I wanted the VAT portion, what would I do? VAT inclusive minus VAT exclusive gives me what? that okay again I'm just using an equation I'm using something that represents something okay so I could put X's and Y's there it doesn't really matter but if I substitute and solve I get the missing variables make sense okay here's the note about supply and demand okay so a little bit of economics here okay yeah, they're not going to test the economics they're going to test the mathematics Okay, so how do I determine equilibrium? Okay, how do I find equilibrium? Right, so demand is downward sloping. Supply is upward sloping. Okay, so at some point in time, if the one slopes down and the one slopes up, they're going to cross at some point in time. Do you agree? And the crossing would be the equilibrium. Okay, next equation, cost. Y equals mx plus c can represent the total cost. Okay, total cost combined what? There's the answer. Fixed cost plus variable cost. Okay, so if I had a diagram, the graph would look like that. Okay, why? This would be your constant, which is your what? Is, which is what? Your fixed cost. That's not going to change. Whether you have 
uh, one sale or many, you've still got a certain amount of fixed cost to cover. Do you agree? Okay. And then you've got the VC, which is the gradient, which, which actually gives the line the slope. Okay. So the variable cost would be your MX. Okay. The more you sell, the more cost you'll have because now you need to manufacture more goods for your consumer. Make sense? Okay. Here's the note about revenue. Okay, I've summarized it. I've given it to you. How do I calculate revenue? There's it. Price times quantity gives me total revenue. Okay. And the next bit, elasticity of demand. Okay, what is price elasticity? Do you remember from your economics? Econ 101. What is price elasticity? Think about goods that are bought and sold. Do you remember? Elasticity of demand. What does that represent in economics? Price elasticity of demand. Uh, with regard to what? Okay, so here's an example. Okay, if the price of food had to go up, would you buy less food? No, you still have to buy food. Okay, so elasticity of demand is how are you going to change your, your quantity based on the price? Okay, so if, if, if food had to get more expensive, you still need to buy it. Everyone needs to eat. Okay, but if luxury goods have to, had to go up, all right, you don't have to buy it. Okay, it's not a necessity. Okay, so price elasticity is looking at exactly that. Okay, it's looking at how does demand and supply change in terms of the price and the quantity. Okay, so what variables do we use? We use PD, which represents the price for demand, and we use QD, which represents the price for, uh, not price, the quantity demanded. PS would be price supplied, QS would be quantity supplied. And if I make these two equations equal, price demand and price supply, price supplied, if those are equal, what do I get? Yes, demand, supply, and that's the equilibrium. Okay. All right, so I asked the question here, what is equilibrium? Price demanded equals price supplied. Or quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. Okay, it doesn't matter which one you use, you get the same answer either or. Because remember, it's two different variables of the same equation.